Hey guys, Brian from Fort Knox Company. Um, have you ever tried to install a TV up on the wall and maybe you wanted to hide the cords? Or even better, maybe you wanted to actually plug it in up high but your house didn't come with any light sockets that were that high? Um, I can show you one way how to do it, one way that I've done it a few times. And this is just one way to skin a cat, but I'll show you what I did here. I'll break it down step by step. All right, so the problem we have here is we have our cameras here in our kids' room and they always like to play with those cords. So what I wanted to do is be able to put an outlet high enough to where I could keep that cord out of reach. You can see my son there in the video. First, we're gonna turn the power off and then we're gonna remove our plate covers. Once you've done that, you can then remove your light socket. This is all pretty easy, straightforward stuff. In case you have any questions about how to actually remove these light sockets or actually how to install new ones, I have a video on my page that I've actually broken it down in full detail. So in this video, I'm not gonna go too far into depth with it, but again, it's pretty straightforward. And I do have that video there that you guys can go watch. It'll give you a full understanding of what's going on. First thing is we're gonna check to find out where the stud's at. Any light socket box in the wall is gonna be mounted to a stud in the wall. So that means on one side or the other, you're actually gonna find a wood stud there. And that's where we need to actually start from so that we know where we need to pry this box away from. I'll show you guys a little video here of what's gonna happen next and why we need to actually push that box away from that wood. So once you removed your plate cover, removed your socket, you're gonna have your box inside the wall. The way this box is actually held inside the wall there is with these two nails. Those two nails are driven into the stud. And the goal here is to create some space first with a screwdriver. You're gonna actually pry it away a little bit, try not to damage the drywall. And then that's gonna create a little bit of a gap. You're gonna come back in with your sawzall, and I like to come at an angle, and you're gonna basically try to come in at an angle and break that nail. Come through this way, break that nail and you'll be able to break the box loose inside. Once you do that, you can loosen up these plastic tabs wherever you see the wires coming through in the back. That will give you some slack. Then you can turn the box and actually pull it out through the opening and it should fit through the opening. You'll see in the video, I actually had to remove the nail here because it was pushed out a little bit and it was hitting the drywall as it was coming out. So it takes a little finesse, but once you cut through those nails, you can then have this to work with and you can pull it out. Once you remove the old box, you'll have your wire sitting there. You can then use one of these new boxes, which they call an old work box. And it's gonna be able to fit in through the opening that's already there. And then as you tighten these two screws, it'll turn these paddles. And as you tighten it, it brings a paddle up and actually pulls it up against the drywall and it squeezes and creates a nice tight seal. So you can always loosen it again if you had to and take it back out. But what's nice is that this will fit right where the old hole is. You don't have to make any extra cuts. You're gonna pop these, put your new wires, your old wires through. You can uh, connect everything and then just tighten it up and then you're ready to go. So now that you kind of know what's going on, you can see here, I just took my flathead screwdriver. I got it right between the outlet box and I pried between that and the wood. Make sure you're prying high on the box and low on the box where the nails are at. If you pry in the middle, you'll get a little bit of flex from the plastic. So you're gonna be able to move that box a little bit easier if you go low and go high on the box. And you can see here, I created just enough gap for my blade to get in from my Sawzall. It's not too hard, doesn't take a lot of work. And those nails should push out a little bit. You're only trying to get maybe a 16th or an eighth of an inch. And right there, you can actually kind of see the nail I'm poking at with the screwdriver. Next step, grab your Sawzall. You wanna to try to come in at an angle. And that's to actually prevent from overshooting and actually cutting through the drywall like you saw I did there. Now that I've cut through the nails, the box is free. You can see here in my son's room, 
I actually just kind of showed you another example. I was a little bit better at coming in the angle and not cutting through the drywall as much. But on my son's wall, it's actually on the exterior of the house. So when you see the box move here, you can actually see the insulation behind it. Just makes things a little bit tighter. Once you have those nails cut and you've freed up the box, you can kind of see here, I have that old work box just to show you what it looks like. But next step is to actually free these wires and get that box out of there. I ended up having to remove the nail that I cut. I couldn't really move it out with my hand, so I had to get some needle nose pliers and help it. But the head of the nail was actually hitting the drywall when I tried to pull the box out. So that was the first thing stopping it from moving. I ended up having to do the same thing on the bottom. And then eventually I had to take a screwdriver and loosen up the tabs in the back of the box because they were still pinching on the wires. You'd be amazed at how much grab those little plastic tabs have. So you're almost always gonna have to loosen those up a little bit. And I'll show you here at the end of the video exactly how much I had to move them. And I pretty much opened them up all the way. This box is just gonna go in the trash. So it doesn't really matter how much you damage it. You can see here, I was still having some more trouble. And then again, that was because the wires were grabbing in the back of the box. Even though I had them pushed open, they were still trying to grab on the way out. But because the power's off, don't be afraid to actually move these wires as much as you need. I'll show you here in the box, those little tabs in the back is what I'm talking about. When you're installing a box, you're actually gonna have to punch those open and slide in your new or old wires. So on this one, I actually had to go inside with my screwdriver and pry them left or right, just to kind of create a bigger opening and allow that uh, wire to actually fall through as I pull the box out. Best just to open them up all the way, give yourself as much room as you need to actually get that box out of there. Next step is to mark where we wanna put our new outlet box at the elevated location. Right here, I know that I'm working right above where the old outlet was. So I know there's a stud somewhere in this area. I'll just use a piece of painter's tape just to kind of mark as a reference point. But you don't necessarily have to worry about putting your new outlet box right next to the stud. These uh, old work outlet boxes show you, they, they basically just hold against the drywall. So you can mount them in between the studs anywhere you want if there's a specific area. I like to work a little bit away from the stud just so I don't have anything obstructing it. But when you're ready to cut the hole, I just use the box itself, mark the smallest area around it to start small in case you have to open it up a little bit bigger later. But this usually works the first try. Don't be afraid, just go for it, get your keyhole saw cut it right out. And you can see here, I'll do a little test fit. Everything works perfectly. It's a nice tight fit. Next, install your wire. In my daughter's room, there was no insulation, so I'll show you a little bit how, that, how easy that was. But on my son's room, there is that insulation there, so I used my fishing tape to actually feed all the way down the wall. This will make it a little bit easier, make sure that when I pull the wire through, um, I could just do it a lot faster. It's not gonna get stuck on anything. I'll show you a little picture or video down low, what it looks like when that fishing tape comes through. Once you have the fishing tape all the way down, I basically just try to find a stud, something hard that I can run it along. And I know that that will kind of guide it the rest of the way. Pull it out tape my wire to it, make sure that it's taped enough to where when it pulls through that insulation, it's probably not gonna catch. I like to put a little piece of tape over the end of it because that's gonna be the first thing that grabs when you try to pull it up. Then you just go up top, give it a little tug and you can pull that tape all the way back up and then you have your new wire or your new power line all the way through the wall, just that easy. In my daughter's room, you can see here, I just basically had to feed it straight down. It's a full hollow cavity. It went all the way to the bottom. There was nothing obstructing it. I've punched those holes in my old work box, fed my new wires, fed my old wires. 
because the insulation is there, I did have to kind of work the box in. And as I tighten those screws, like I showed you earlier, the tab actually just squeezes up against the drywall and you can feel it tighten up. Shouldn't wiggle at all. They usually have a really good secure fit when you're done. Then you're just gonna cut your wires to length. I cut them a little bit short here because I'm working with three sets of wires. I know it's gonna be really tight inside that box. This in my daughter's room, I'm showing you, basically I fed the old wires first and now I'm feeding in the new wire. Again, we're gonna have three sets of wires in here. So it's gonna be a tight fit when we're all done. In my other video, I show you how I wire up these sockets. So once you're pretty familiar with that and comfortable with how they install, you can work with a little bit shorter wires enough to where you can get all three sets in there, no problem. Cut and strip and cut back your wires to length. Everything's gonna be about the same length. That way your socket, when it wires up, it sits nice and even. You can see here, I'm kind of putting in some little bends in the wires. Again, that's just to kind of speed up the process when I get ready to install the socket. I won't go into full depth here on how I'm actually wiring this in, but on one side of the light socket, it actually says black or hot. It's gonna be your black wires and neutral or white on the other side. You just put white to white, black to hot, and it's really that easy. There is another way you can actually do this. I'm putting two whites on one terminal and then another one on the bottom one. They're connected anyway, so it doesn't necessarily matter which way you do that, but a little more advanced way would be to pigtail everything inside and just have one lead come off for the black and one lead come off for the white. But here I just decided to do it the hard way. Probably the hardest part of this whole process is trying to get that light socket or that, I'm sorry, the outlet back into the wall with all those wires. So again, power's off. So don't be afraid to move them around a little bit. It takes a little bit of finesse, but I eventually got it there. It'll work. And once you get it all in there, tighten down those screws, square everything up, and you can install your faceplate. You're done down here, and you pretty much just repeat the process at the new box up top. We're gonna install our old work box, run our new wire through, cut it to length, strip the wires, get them ready for the socket, install our socket just like we did, should be really easy because we only have one set of wires to worry about. Put everything back together and put that face plate back on and we're done. Turn that power back on, check it. You can see here I'm using one of my kids' night lights. Not necessarily the most high tech, but I'm showing you that the power works and we're ready to use it. So we're using this for our kids' cameras. No more kids playing with the power cords, but you can use it for your TV mounts, whatever reason you need that power up high. It's not too complicated, makes life a lot easier. And there you go, problem solved. Now you got your light socket up high, you can mount your TV, we plugged in our cameras, kids aren't playing with the wires no more, life is great, right? Uh, maybe you even learned a new skill and you did something yourself, you can take some pride in that. I'm gonna be putting out more videos on how to do these things. Um, I'm always doing these kind of things around the house and I'm just trying to get around to filming it more and breaking it down. There's always different ways to do this. This is just one way that I've done it a few times. Um, I've done this for a TV in one of our other rooms. It was really easy and it takes basic tools that you might have already at home. So give it a try. If you mess up, worst case scenario, let's figure out how to do some drywall, right? Just kidding. But um, I am gonna be doing some videos on drywall because I'm doing that in my shop. So keep an eye out for that. And um, I definitely recommend going out and checking that um, the light socket video I made, it's worth watching. It kind of will break down in detail how those sockets are wired, what you're gonna see inside the wall sometimes. I even talk about a GFCI circuit. So just something you guys can further learn about and become more familiar with it and gain some confidence in doing these things yourself. Save some money, do it yourself, and subscribe.